Welcome to your post-match reaction for the defeat on Saturday against the Philadelphia Eagles. Sorry if I sound a bit uh, dry in the throat. I've just got back from the gym. Um, look, it's a disappointing end of the season. No one wants their season to end in the playoffs, especially when you realise how close you are to a Super Bowl appearance and potentially another ring. But we cannot fault the boys for their performance throughout the season. Yes, Saturday was disappointing in the performance, but our heads stay high. We played a very good Eagles side, as much as it hurts to admit. We've put in so much work in the last off-season, during the season. The players have really got together this year um, and put in a massive shift. Can't fault them at all. It's just a, a tough hill to swallow. And let's have a look back at a game which saw the Giants exit at a divisional round. So just like the Minnesota game, the home team start very strong. Eagles get an early touchdown and they make it 7-0. Um, and from that point onwards, they just dominated. But it was one of them, like we, we knew they were going to start strong. The home crowd were going to be in up for it. Justin Hurts had a point to prove. Um, and the Eagles team, obviously, as we know, very strong, very good um, offensively and defensively. So we're always going to be up against it. And obviously, when you score an early touchdown, it does make everything a little bit harder for yourselves. But it did happen against the Vikings and we bounced straight back. Unfortunately, this time, though, it wasn't to be. Uh, we go up the other end and looking back on it, it's, it's a bad decision from Brian Dayball, I have to say. I, I didn't like this, the choice to go on it, go through it at fourth and eight. I always thought of just getting the three points on the ball, make it um, less than a one-score game. You know, just keep it nice and close. Don't throw any big plays yet. Um, we didn't need to. And you know, it, it, it wouldn't have changed the game, scoring them three points and making it 7-3. But at that time, it may have made it a bit more tense. I think the Eagles still would have rallied on to win the game. But it just would have um, given us something to cheer about. But we go for it fourth and eight, doesn't work. And yeah, I, th I think that was the start of the downfall really, wasn't it? The Eagles then go 14 nil up. We didn't have another chance to go. And Daniel Jones, who's been Mr. Reliable recently, playing very well. And one thing I will say is this, Daniel Jones was not at fault individually for the defeat. The whole team were, the whole team didn't step up well enough. And they got outclassed by a team that are a mile better than them. And the, the, the positive is that that's the bar we need to be at. That's where we need to be. Jerry Shade and Brian Day will now look at that. That's where we need to be for next season and the season on uh, moving on. Can we get that within a year? I, I doubt it, but we can definitely get a lot closer. Um, and, and for me, the Eagles, after watching everyone in the divisional round, they're my favourites to win it. I, I think they're, they're so strong. They made us look very poor and people go, oh, the Giants aren't that great anyway. Look, we beat the Vikings. We got to the divisional round. We're not a no-joke team. They ruined us on, on Saturday night and it was quite depressing to watch it at the end. But yeah, we get another chance. It's 14-0. It's um, and of course, like I mentioned in the pre-match prediction, James Bradbury comes back to haunt us and gets an INT off of Daniel Jones. Like I was saying, Mr. Reliable Daniel Jones picked off. And yeah, at that point, I pretty much knew <laughs> the game was over. I couldn't see us coming back from 14-0. Yeah, just it was just painful from minute one. Um, the Eagles just were so good, weren't they? They, they just were so much better than us. It was more organised. Our defence just couldn't deal with anything they, they threw at us. Um, we seemed to try a couple of different things, didn't work. People getting on Evan Neal's back, that's, that's not in any way okay. Um, a rookie coming through, not playing his preferred position that he played at college as well. It's going to take time for him to grow. I've, the problem is with the Evan Neal situation is that Evan Neal came with Kayvon at five and seven. So when Kayvon plays very good in his rookie year, the expectation is that everyone in and around that level should play the same. It's a completely different ball game playing on the offense and defensive lines. Kayvon's had a very good year, take nothing away from him, but Look, Evan Neal's had a rough start to his Giants career, but let's not write him off. You know, let's not get put pressure on him. He's a young guy. He needs time. And I, I do believe he'll he will come good for us because I've seen it in spells where he's played well for us. He's just a young lad. He just needs time and he's playing in a in an offensive line that's been broken for years. So and it's not perfect now. So let's not dig him out. There's a lot more players that can take more blame um, and more accountability than the young Evan Neal.
The second quarter doesn't get much better for us. We actually end up going into half time at 28 0 down. Uh, yeah, it was just they just they just knew how to find the space when we got we were on the offense. They knew how to to mark up and make sure we didn't get any good first downs. Yeah, they, I think man for man on uh, Saturday night they were they were a lot better than us. Um, I can't stand their their, their uh, head coach. He's an absolute prick. My my French, um, he's just smug and yeah. It's it's a shame because I actually don't mind a fair few of the Philly players. I think they're very good players, but he just gives them a horrible reputation. It was look, it was an, it was a masterclass by Philly, the number one seed. As expected, we it was going to be very hard for us to get anything um, in in their grounds, a divisional rival a team that's already beaten us twice. The, the the odds were already stacked up against us, but look, I'm I'm so proud of of how far we've come. You look back this time last year. Four wins out of 17, looking like there was no future, looking like we we're going to have years and years of just having to wait to get back to the playoffs. And maybe we've we've jumped the gun too early by jumping into the playoffs first season and now everyone thinks this is a, is a regular thing. It's not going to be, there's going to be a reality check next year um, unless we consistently improve the squad. Because teams now know that the New York Giants aren't no mess about team. You can't turn up um, half interested and beat the New York Giants. Look at Vikings last week. Look at the Titans. I know the Titans didn't do well in the end, but look at the Titans in the first week of the season. Everyone had the Titans winning that, especially after winning their conference last year. So we're no mess about team now. I think we'll find it a bit harder next year. I still think we're a playoff team. Um, our schedule's not nice to us either. A couple of hard games in there, but yeah, 28-0 down at half time. There's not much to report on, on the game, so I'm more just like looking into the future as well. But yeah, Philly, once again, showed their class and 28-0 at halftime. Our one touchdown does come in the third quarter. Matt Breeder with the touchdown runs through from about 10, it's eight yards maybe. Um, that was the only points we picked up on the game. Nice to get a touchdown. I'm glad we did it. they didn't like keep us to nothing. That would have been a bit embarrassing, I guess. All I will say this, um, that lot, Saturday night was not an embarrassment. Um, I saw a lot of social media people, a lot of tweets from fans saying it was an embarrassing scoreline, embarrassing performance. If we'd have lost that score to a team that didn't make the playoffs, then it is. To lose to the number one seed who are expected to go to the Super Bowl, who are probably going to favour themselves in the Super Bowl as well based on their regular season performance, there's no embarrassment in that performance. We turned up with a team that should never have made the playoffs we turned up with a young, unexperienced team, a first-year head coach, a first-year general manager. Everything was against us on Saturday. We had no right to be there, and we've done our team and our franchise proud. Everything about Saturday will be forgotten about and will be a massive learning curve for next season. These players will now go into next season with that belief, with that courage. We're no longer the little team that everyone can beat and get wins off. We need to look at the off-season. Jerry Shea needs to bring in some good players. I'd like to see a couple more experienced players come in, um, especially now that I would consider us um, a playoff contending team. I, th I think we, after seeing this season, I, I think we can establish ourselves as that. I think a couple more experienced heads in the team just to settle the nerves in some of the occasions. Because I, I do find, obviously, obviously, the rookies maybe did get a bit nervous uh, on Saturday night not to their fault just they're just not used to that obviously experience and obviously you could tell the difference between the Eagles um, and, the, and the Giants in terms of player experience and player personnel in terms of uh, this is more going into the future now as well isn't it um, in terms of Barkley and Daniel Jones what do we do with them well Jerry Shane's come out today and said that he does want to keep both more adamant on Daniel Jones so take that out how you will for me you have to try and keep both of them i think you, you're just going back to trying to restart again um if you get rid of them to two of the main people of your team two of the best players on your team i mean two of the best players on the offensive line 100 percent um so you get rid of them two and you're almost having to rebuild the whole team again no one wants that i think a lot of fans have come to the conclusion now that daniel jones is good enough 
Saquon Barkley has proved himself over a full year. Them two need to be signed on. However, not at the expense of a massive uh, cap reduction. So, yeah, my final thoughts on the New York Giants versus Philadelphia Eagles. First of all, congratulations to the Eagles. Good luck against San Francisco. Whether I mean that or not, you'll never know. Yeah, good luck to them. Number one seed versus number two. All set out for that to be a big game in the NFC Championship. The Giants have now got to look, like I said, forget that game, move on, take it as a, a learning curve, take it as a stepping stone to the success that we're trying to build. I have every belief that Jerry Shane will pull off wonders this offseason. Um, whether we can be the level of Eagles next year, I'm not too sure, but I definitely think we can be a lot better and a team to be feared next year if we get it right. But yeah, that's just my thoughts. Um, going forward now, videos will probably just be gossip and draft predictions and stuff like that. But yeah, our season has now come to an end. A proud season to be a Giants fan as we exit at the divisional rounds of the NFL playoffs. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of us this season. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next week at some point with another video.